This is the brand new Panasonic S5 Mark II. This is the new DJI RS3 Mini. And this is the new Sony 20 to 70 F4. Which are all incredible filmmaking tools, but there's one big problem. You probably shouldn't buy any of them. Maybe I'm being soft because I just got back from vacation in Maui with the family, incredible times. Big highlight for me was snorkeling with Kai, two turtles, you could hear the whales singing in the background. Just incredible times. Maybe it's because I'm getting old or because I've been doing this for a few years now, but I kind of feel bad when people say they bought something because they watched my video. And sometimes I question, should they have bought that thing? <laughs> Was that really the best thing that they could have spent their hard earned money on? The big question we need to answer is, how do we figure out what gear we should really buy? Oh, and if you're wondering what all this is about, we're just planning the next year out, uh, trying to be, uh, you know, proactive. Right, Tyler? Right. I can't hear anything, but... If you didn't see the last video, uh, this might be my last year on YouTube. At the very least, I'm gonna take a long break after this year, so... Uh, if you're confused, just, just watch the last video. For example, the Panasonic S5 Mark II, a full frame camera for $2,000, a camera that they're claiming to be a real hybrid, you know, video and photo camera. But I feel like this might be the best video camera in the Lumix lineup because of phase detect autofocus. You see, I used to be a huge Panasonic shooter filmmaker. I love the GH4 and the GH5 in my wedding filmmaking days. But as soon as I started doing this, filming myself, this YouTube channel vlogging, the autofocus was horrendous and I had to retire my Panasonic and I switched over to Canon. The autofocus used to be horrendous on Panasonic cameras, but now we have really great autofocus for video. Not to mention the low light seems to be really good. Check out uh, Gene Potato Jet's video, like A7S III good, which is very surprising, but very interesting. Just an incredible camera. So am I switching to this thing? No and I'll tell you why. Or example number two, the DJI RS3 Mini, an incredible compact gimbal. This is an FX3 with a 24 mil F1.4 on here and is doing perfectly well. This thing is a powerhouse for how small and portable it is and just lightweight. It doesn't really feel much more than like just the camera and lens combo. This is really good. So am I getting rid of my other gimbals over there and just gonna be using this guy? No. Or what about this brand new Sony 20 to 70 mil, which is just a really nice range. Like 20 mil, you can ease up. I gotta switch, hold on. 20 mil, I can easily vlog on this thing. That's a really nice focal length, but then I can also just like really zoom in. This is a great focal range. This is at 20. This is a nice uh, vlogging. Isaac's working on music. We're, we're, we bought like guitar pedals. We're making music. We're gonna make cinematic music. Is that what we're... Look at this zoom. I don't know, there's something in the <laughs> Whoa, I'm so 70. Oh! And it's $1,100, so that's pretty affordable for a really nice zoom like this. It's an F4. Am I gonna be ditching my 16 to 35 mil that I use 99% of the time and just use the 20 to 70 mil 99% of the time? No. Dramatic zoom. And the reason is they are not the best tools for me. That might have been a little bit too dramatic. I still think the Sony FX3 and A7S III are better cameras for me than the Panasonic S5 Mark II. I basically have everything I could ever want and need in a camera except for built-in variable ND filters. That's like the one thing I still want. And I already have two of these. I have all the lenses. I don't need to switch over to Panasonic right now. The RS3 Mini, I already have the RS3 Pro, so I personally don't need this. Except if I had a project where I needed things to be really lightweight. Well, may maybe I might actually like this, but right now, no, I, I don't need this. I'll keep the Pro because I can put pretty much any camera that I own 
on there. And this new Sony 2070, even though it's an incredible range, I kind of like the really shallow depth of field. This is only an F4 and that means crappier low light performance also. And I just, I really like super ultra wide. So the 16 for me, I just enjoy this. So I'm still gonna continue to <laughs> use the same old 16 to 35 mil that I just keep using. But this lens could actually be the perfect lens for me and podcasts or these might be the exact right tools that you need for your filmmaking. Or they could be a terrible mistake for you to buy. So here's how I figure out and how I think you should figure out what gear you should actually be buying. I personally think budget should be your first guide. If you can't afford it, you can't buy it. It's as simple as that. If you have $2,000 budgeted for a camera body, then the Panasonic S5 Mark II might be the perfect camera. Is the FX3 for you? No, you, you can't afford it. It's over your budget, you should not be buying it. If you only had $1,000 for your camera body budget, then no, you shouldn't buy the S5 Mark II because it's over budget. Do not go into debt buying camera gear, Buy things that are in your budget and as you progress in your career, then you get more and more expensive stuff. For example, when I started filmmaking, first of all, I didn't buy a camera for a long time. I just kind of like borrowed people's <laughs> cameras. And then finally I bought a 60D, which I forget, it's called something else I think in, in America, maybe not. That was what I could afford. And it was, it was a fine camera. <laughs> it wasn't the best camera, but it was fine. And I dreamed of the 5D Mark IIs and those cameras, but I couldn't afford them. And then about four years later, I bought a C300 Mark II <laughs> in cash, which was worth more than double what my car was. So that's how I kind of worked my way up as I progressed in my gear, then I bought more expensive stuff. Stuff. Do not go into debt, do not buy it on credit because that can really, really slow down your career growth. Having that pressure of, I have to pay off this gear now, it can really destroy things really fast. Another interesting piece of gear, this cage from Condor Blue. For some people, this is incredible. They need a cage. I would have needed this in my freelance days. For YouTube, I kind of just don't need a cage. So I don't use these right now, but for you, this might be an absolute must have you need it. If you have, you know, other accessories, monitors, all that stuff, you need a cage, it's so handy. Need, not want. Think about what you actually need to make the videos that get you paid. And the most important thing here is that get you paid. Not the videos that you want to make, the videos that are paying your bills, that are getting you money. And in the beginning, stick to only things that you actually need. For example, a tripod might not be the sexiest, <laughs> coolest piece of gear, but if you're doing interviews to get paid, a tripod is gonna be a pretty worthwhile investment. You're gonna die without a tripod. So that is something that you need. Do you need a gimbal to film those interviews? Probably not. And then again, as you progress in your career, then you can buy some of those kind of wants, things that you don't really, really need, but you just want and you wanna learn new things and all that stuff. That's cool. Need to pay the bills, not want. And lastly, buy the best gear. Not the gear that you're brand loyal to or that everybody else has or your friend told you to buy or us YouTubers said was really good. Newsflash, companies send us this gear and there's embargoes which are kind of like uh, a sworn secrecy until this date, you can't talk about it. And then once you hit this date, the embargo date, then you can talk about it, you can put out a video on it. And that's why there's all these videos that pop up at the exact same time and people are always like, oh wow, you guys are so in sync. It's like, no, there's just an embargo date and it makes it feel like, wow, this product is incredible. Everybody needs to get this product because everybody's talking about it. All the YouTubers are talking about it. But really, it's just an easy way to make content. When a company sends you a fun new lens or a new camera, it's fun to test it out and it's great for views. And so we take advantage of that and you wanna be first. So you wanna be, you know, on that embargo time, 9 a.m. on the Tuesday or whatever it is. 90% of the stuff that I review and that all YouTubers review 
aren't being used by those YouTubers. It's not possible to use all of the gear that we get and we review. We kind of stick to our own tools that work for us. And those are the best tools for us. Notice how I've been on the Sony's for a good, what, couple of years now. There just hasn't been another camera from another company or from Sony. I've just been using the a7S III mostly. There hasn't been a better camera for me. And so I haven't had any reason to switch. The key thing here is to buy the best piece of gear for you, which is different from the best piece of gear for me. The Sony a7S III might be a terrible camera for you, for what you need to do. Should you get this $2,000 camera or this one? I don't know. You have to figure out what is the best for you. And that's not the one that everybody's talking about. It's the one that best fits your needs. And just so we're clear, I am not saying that any of these tools that I've talked about in this video are bad or crappy in any way. They are incredible. They're so good. It's just you need to figure out, are they good for you right now? Things can change. A year from now, it could be an incredible piece of gear for you and for the things that you do. But maybe right now, it's just out of your budget range. And so you need to figure out what gear is best for you. Don't let us YouTubers or anybody else tell you otherwise. Okay, I think that's enough uh, life lessons from dad. Um, I hope this helped you. I, I just needed to get this off my chest. I felt, you know, some sort of obligation. There's just so much gear coming out all the time and it feels like it, there aren't like these big leaps and bounds in like clear performance that like, wow, this is the thing. Um, one of those things actually is iPhones for me. I, j I use my wife's iPhone, which is the 13 and this is the 14. And I just realized how good the cameras have gotten even from the 13 to 14. Um, so iPhones are, are like the one thing that I, I upgrade right away, no matter what, just because I know that the cameras get so much better. But yeah, a lot of this gear, it just feels like it's like incrementally getting better, but it's all, you could be using a, a four-year-old camera right now and I probably wouldn't notice the difference. So yeah, gear matters, but it doesn't matter. Balance, all of that stuff. All right, I'll see you guys, bye.